Hello, and welcome back to the Matt Yasa channel. I'll be attempting the vac stack technique today. I'm gonna to start off by flame cutting a section of this large tubing. This will be the outer chamber of the vac stack, the chamber that encases all the glass inside. I'm gonna heat up and puff out that end a little bit and then come back to pick out a very small hole. That way I can blow it open in the flame for a blow tube attachment. And this is kind of a smaller tube for this technique. I'm trying to downscale the process a little bit. If you haven't made any line tubing yet and you're thinking of doing this technique, I would say probably start with something a little simpler, uh, maybe swiping color onto some clear tube. Just like the Vortex marble video, but instead of using solid glass, you would use a clear tube. But this should still give you a good idea of the process of how it's done. It's kind of meant to be on the larger scale. That way when you do it, you can pull out a lot of finished glass at one time. And so I just opened up this blow tube and I'm flaring it open. I applied some beeswax here to my metal tool, the jacks, in order to prevent them from sticking with the glass. And now for the blow tube attachment, I'll go ahead and heat up both sides very molten, very hot, and attach it in the flame. And then I'm gonna keep rotating on center while I give it a slight pull to even out that wall thickness between that attachment there. And so now I'll go ahead and flame cut the tube again in half here because it's a little bit too long. This is kind of a cool shot here. You can see the flame start to wrap itself around the tubing. It's a very interesting thing that happens with the lower pressure torches. And despite the water vapor you see at the end of the tube there, it is actually cool to the touch. Glass is actually a pretty terrible conductor for heat. And so I blew out a very thin bubble and I'm opening it up in the flame just to cut down on the bubble trash floating around in the studio. And then I'm cleaning up the edge with this clear rod before I flare it. That way it'll flare out very evenly. So I'm going to heat it up and go in for the flare, but it's sticking a little bit on the jacks. I need to add a little bit more wax and then heat up the rim a little bit more too before I start flaring. I'm adding a little bit of natural beeswax to the jacks. This will vaporize on contact with the hot glass, causing a little protective layer of steam. Now I've got a little bit of extra beeswax there in the vessel, and looking back I didn't think it was too much of a problem then, but later on I find out it is quite a bit of a problem. So we'll get more into that, but first I need to fill it with my colored rods. I laid down the bottom half in a black-white, black-white combination, and then the inner tube. This inner tube will create the hollow section for the finished tube. I closed it up and rounded it on the opposite end. Uh, for this side, I'll just leave it open for right now. And I'll finish up by stacking in these slightly odd-shaped rods. This would be a good job for those first quality 7mm rods that I would use for the glass chain necklace. But those won't fit this tube. These are about 4 to 5 millimeter odd rods. And so I'm kind of just experimenting with it here. It's going to be a very small pole. And I know it looks a little bit loose in that shot. I did end up swapping those white ones out for larger rods to tighten it up. And ideally what you want to do is pull out some stringers to stick in between the wall and the rods to eliminate the gap there. I've kind of attached my tube to the vacuum early. 
It would help to seal the piece up first, but that's okay. And I should have let it warm up the kiln a little bit also. I only let it get up a few hundred degrees before I started working on it here. But now to seal it, you would normally just melt the end all together and then attach a blow tube to it. But I'm going to try something a little different with that longer tube. I'm going to see if I can flare it over my rods. That worked a little bit better than I expected. It kind of flared over all the ends and the metal piece is still open to connect to a blow tube. And now I just have to bring that inner wall to the outside wall. I'll just heat it up and use the jacks to push the glass up towards it. And then a paddle on the outside to push the glass back. So they'll seal up the tube, giving me a closed system ready to vacuum out. I'll have to equip my face shield here for the extreme radiant heat. Definitely prefer the face shield. It not only protects a larger portion of my face, but it makes things a lot cooler. It also shades some of the studio light, especially in my peripheral vision, so I can see things a little bit better. And I still do have the didatium glasses on underneath it. However, I don't use it too much because it tends to confuse the autofocus on the camera. Now I'm just flaring up another tube for a blow tube attachment here. Now I got a little bit of extra beeswax here on this one, which is not normally a problem. It'll normally just burn off in the flame. But as I said before, I accidentally got a little bit trapped in the large chamber, so hopefully that won't cause a problem. So I'm connecting up with this blow tube to give me a little bit of stability and help me melt it down without twisting up the lines. Just start melting it down, very similar to the cadmium encasement video. Just start at one end and start working my way down towards the other end. As the glass begins to condense down and melt together, it'll start to push the air out of the tube with the help of the air pump, of course. And I'm just giving it a very slight pull. I don't want to pull it out too much. The tube is already kind of small, but it's definitely better to be done on a larger scale, something like a 50 millimeter tube. That way you can pull out a little extra than something smaller like this. So better be scaled up than scaled down for this one, but it is a pretty cool process nonetheless. And so I'm just melting everything together, pulling it out a little bit, and trying my best not to twist up my lines here. Now you may have noticed the Turbo Cobalt is very bright orange, very glowing and molten. While the white rods don't look like they're glowing much, but they really are, it's just hard to notice it within the white. So white can be a little bit harder to gauge the temperature on based on the glow compared to your darker colors, and especially cadmium colors. And I'm just going to go ahead and flame cut it right there. I notice the inner tube stops a little bit short from the end. I've got a couple cracks here on the back side too. Things just didn't go quite as planned here. And so I did notice I had quite a bit of extra humidity in the vacuum tube. I'm kind of thinking that beeswax might have played a little bit of a role with a couple of the problems here, but if I would have brought it fully up to temperature in the kiln before I started melting it together, and then also just giving it more heat during the process. I think that probably would have helped bring everything together a little bit better, but I'm going to keep at it here. Sometimes they say it's not what you can make, but what you can save. So I went ahead and blew that air bubble all the way to the end there. That way it's nice and even and I can open it up to make a tube. But before that, I'm going to try to get some of these cracks melted out. I had a couple come down from the blow tube where it was a line of clear in between the lines. And it's cracking on me a little bit more still. I should probably be using the kiln, but I'll just go ahead and keep going at it here. Now 
I think I'm gonna have to flame cut it still again and use this smaller section and just get rid of that one that was cracking up on me. So I only have this small section left. I did run into some mistakes in this video, but I was thinking it'd be good to leave those mistakes in and show you how I'd work through them. You know, we often learn more from our mistakes than we do from our success. So with enough mistakes, you eventually find the right path, but it all really comes down to practice in the end, putting your hours in. But speaking of putting hours in, I ended up giving myself some hours off last week. I took a trip to Kansas for a few days for a fun water park adventure with the family. And it was a really nice vacation. I really haven't been out of town for that many days in a long time. But it really wasn't just for myself, of course. I was there also mainly to watch my nieces to make sure they're safe in the water. And to help them win some prizes at the arcade, too. They had a uh, Space Invaders, which is a game I'm very familiar with. The first time I played it with my little niece, we won the 500 ticket bonus, which was pretty exciting for both of us. We spent a couple minutes just sitting there as it was feeding us tickets. And so the day before we left, we went back to the arcade to spend all of our tickets. And my brother comes up to me and says, you gotta go back and play that Space Invaders game and win the 500 ticket prize about three or four more times. And then we'll have enough to get two giant stuffed animals for the girls, so. And I'm just kind of thinking to myself, I gotta beat it four more times. That's quite a lot, but okay, let's let's do it. And so I just sat down there and I just started doing it. The score you had to get for the bonus was 26,000, and my top score was 36,000. So I really blew it out of the water there. I even got to put my name in the top 10 high scores on the machine. That used to be a big thing when you went to the arcade when you were young. You know, being able to put your name in the top high scores and have it come up when your friends play. And here we are at the Space Invaders game to show you that 500 ticket bonus I was talking about. Also one of the two stuffed animals. It brought me a lot of joy that I could help win that for them. They were really happy to have them. When my concentrators shut off on me there, I think I might have overloaded the circuit a little bit. I'll have to check the circuit breaker. That's one of the things you have to be careful about when you're running a lot of electronic devices, is not to put too much on one circuit. The kiln itself is about 15 amps, and then each concentrator does 5 amps themselves, so you have to be careful to spread it out a little bit. When I notice that I'm blown in it, there's a slight hole somewhere. I'm losing a little bit of pressure, and I'm kind of listening and kind of feeling around, and I think it's right here. So I'm going to marble that shot and keep going with it. With any kind of loss of pressure, it does become very difficult to blow out a vessel. Now that that's fixed, I'm going to heat the whole vessel up, wait a few moments for the heat to radiate and even out, and then start to puff into it to blow it out. Now I'm going to hold it up towards the ceiling a little bit to have it fall back towards me for a more ablated sphere. Yeah, it's looking pretty good there. And now I'm going to come back towards the bottom and begin to flatten it out, flatten out a base. I'm holding it upward as I'm heating it, so gravity will have it fall back a little bit, and then I'll use my paddle, that way you can see what's going on. And lastly, I'm gonna warm my claws up a little bit in the flame before I grab onto it to start to melt off that tube. I can hear I have some guests coming into the shop, so I'm gonna have to flare open the top a little bit with my jacks and hurry it up in the kiln. I'll be on in one second. Backtack complete. So I had to cut it a little bit short for this video and I had a few mistakes here and there, but I think it's looking pretty good. I've got this little wigwag vase made. It's not too bad. 
It always feels good to get something made, but at the end of the day, even if your project backfires on you, you'll still be getting a lot of practice done, which will help you progress in the long run. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the Matt Yasa channel. And so have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you next time.